Hello class, welcome back to Art Mood. My name is Mr. Sad, I am your host, and I'm glad to see you again today. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a different lesson today, and it's called Artist Statements. Uh, we're gonna learn about what artist statements are, um, why we need them, and how we use them in uh, looking at a piece. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick, and we will read and get started with this. There it is, artist statements. Now, first we have to decide what is an artist statement? What is an artist statement? It's a phrase or a few sentences that comment on what you have made and why you have made it. I want you to repeat that. I want you to say what you have made and why you have made it. That's all an artist statement is. So for example, if I drew a picture or painted a picture, just like my Kandinsky one right here. If I wanted to give myself an artist statement, I would say what I have made and why I chose to make it. And that's all it is. And so what we are going to do today is you're actually gonna come up with an artist statement for the project that you have just worked on. If it's the Kandinsky, you're gonna do it for the Kandinsky painting, or if it's for the self-portrait, you're gonna do it for a self-portrait. But you're gonna do what you have, tell me what you have made and why you have made it. And to show you some examples, I wanted, to, or I wanted to show you some examples of some artist statements by some famous artists. So let's go to the first artist, one that we all know really well. This is Wassily Kandinsky. He made this painting over here. And here are some comments that he made as he made these paintings or after he was finished. These are his artist statements. He said, I let myself go. I thought, of li I thought little of the houses and trees, but applied color, stripes, and spots to the canvas. I'm gonna pause right there. Do you see some stripes on the canvas? Do you see some spots? Okay. Uh, Kandinsky also said, within me sounded the memory of early evenings in Moscow. Before my eyes was the strong color saturated scale of the Munich light and atmosphere, which thundered deeply in the shadows, okay? He also wrote, I applied streaks and blobs of color onto the canvas with a palette knife. Again, I just want you to kind of look over here. Do you see streaks and blobs of color? He says, and I made them sing with all the intensity I could. What does he mean when he says he made it sing? Comment below if you know what he means. I'm just real curious to see if you know. But as you can see in this artist statement, Kandinsky told us what he made and why he made it. He made this painting and it kind of reminds him of home. If you remember when he says it, uh, within me sounded the memory of an early evening in Moscow. So that's where Kandinsky uh, was born, but he studied a lot of his art away from his home. So that's pretty neat. So this is just another famous example of Kandinsky. It's somebody that we've learned a lot about. And that was his artist statement. Here's one of a person we haven't learned about. Her name is Lori Simmons. She said, I made this drawing when I was 10. It was part of a series of girls from around the world in native dress. My sister had it for years and gave it back to me as a birthday present after I started shooting pictures of Japanese love dolls in 2009. The strangest thing about it is it is actually a self-portrait of my 10-year-old self dressed as a geisha. Again, I find this one really crazy because she was 10 years old when she made this one, right? But all this artist statement tells us is what she made and why she made it. She made a picture of herself. She said this was a self-portrait of her 10-year-old self dressed in as a geisha. So I think that's pretty cool. But then she tells us why she did it. And she said that long ago she was part of a, she was studying a part of a series of girls from around the world in their native dress. Um, so she was probably interested in drawing girls that were um, in their culture and in their native dress. So I think that's really cool. Tells us what she made and why she made it, okay? Now I'll give you one artist that you probably know fairly well, and that's me, this is Mr. Sad. This is a tunnel book that I made recently, um, or at least earlier in the year. And so I just wanted to show you that an artist statement does not have to be very long. It can actually be kind of short. So what I want to do, to do is I want you to uh, listen to my comments about it. And I want you to tell me what I created and why I created it. Are you listening? I created a tunnel book about the three little pigs to tell a story about being prepared. It reminds me of old cartoons and makes me happy. That's it. 
an artist statement does not have to be very long, does not have to be very broad. It can be very specific and very small. So again, what did I make? I made a tunnel book. A tunnel book is kind of like a book that's 3D. Um, I'll have to show you to it on camera. I think I'll, I think in the next video, I'll try to, or, or the next section, I will try to show you um, <laughs> what, um, what I commented on or what I made, uh, but that's at home. So I'll have to do that there. But also I told you, I told you why I made it. I told you I wanted to create a tunnel book to tell a story about being prepared. The story of the three little pigs is talking about three pigs that are, um, that are being uh, chased after a wolf and two of the pigs are not prepared very well. They, uh, in fact, they uh, do a really po poor job of being prepared. So that's what I wanted to do my art to show, to be prepared. But I also really love old cartoons and, and overall this, this piece makes me happy. So I told you what I made and why I made it, okay? So hopefully that helped with you today, um, understanding what an artist statement is. And my job, or at least my goal for you is that we won't do artist statements all the time, but I would like to do them after every big project. So you should be watching this video after you have finished either your Kandinsky painting, that's kindergarten, first and second grade, or if you finish your self-portrait, third, fourth, and fifth. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a um, attachment that I'm going to send. I'll probably put it in the comments or find a, find a download link for you, um, or maybe it'll be in our class dojo. But I want you to use um, a little piece of paper that I have to help you write your artist statement. This is what it looks like. And on here, it's got some um, it's got some sentences on here that um, need to be finished. Um, but all four of these um, all four of these sentences um, are things that you could fill in. And if you can't write, then like you're in kindergarten or first grade, which most first graders can write too, um, then I want you to see if you can get your parents to help you, or at least try to answer the question. Okay. So I'm going to send those with you. And what I want you to do is I want you to get out your piece. I want you to get out your Kandinsky piece or your self-portrait piece, and I want you to answer the questions on that piece of paper, all right? So I'm gonna flip over to my other camera real quick, and then when I come back, um, hopefully we will have written down our artist statements, and uh, you will have them um, added to your portfolio, okay? So I'll catch you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, what I have done is I've switched uh, my camera over to um, my home computer so that I could do an artist statement alongside with you. Uh, if you are in kindergarten, I would ask you to um, have your parents write this with you or have them fill this out uh, together with you. But if you're in first, second, uh, first or second grade, then I think that we could fill this one out together. Um, so again, if you're a kindergartner, make sure that you, um, your teacher or your uh, parents are helping you fill this out. But we're going to fill this out together. This is the um, artist statement print off that I have um, given to you. Um, and if you don't have this, it will be in the description for you to download and to print off. Um, for that, um, for this artist statement, what I want you to do is I want you to remember that we're going to talk about what we made and why we made it. And we're going to fill this out together. That way you kind of know some of the things that you want to put on here. So the first thing we are going to do is definitely put our name on here. I'm just going to write John S. S for sad. Um, so I want you to put your name on here first. And again, I'll wait a few seconds for you to do that. But remember, this since this is your artist statement, you want your name on it. Uh, we wanna know whose artwork that this belongs to. Now that I've written my name or written my name, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you have your painting or your drawing, whatever you have made out in front of you. The reason you wanna do that is because you wanna be able to answer these sentences by looking at your artwork. <clears throat> so if you were doing the painting with me this week, you would get out your Kandinsky painting. If you did your self-portrait, you would get out your self-portrait. Either way, I want you to get out your art. Now, when we come down to artist statements, there are four words that I have underlined right here. Description, analyze, interpret, and evaluate. All these four words mean are um, different things uh, that we're gonna look at with our artwork. So let's start with description. I wrote this first few words of this sentence, and then I want you to fill it in. It says, I created a, and what did you create? Again, this could be a different thing depending on what you have made. 
Uh, but for since I'm doing this with my um, since I'm doing this with my uh, first, second, and kindergarten classes, we did a painting together. So what I want you to write right here is a painting. So this does not have to be the only thing you write here. You could use more details. You could say that this was an abstract painting or a painting of shapes and lines. Whatever the case is, you write what you created. And then you have a full sentence right here. I created a painting. So that's the first thing that um, I wrote was I created a painting. Because remember, we want to know what you made and why you made it, okay? So after you wrote painting right here, or whatever you have worked on, you're gonna move down to analyze. Analyze right here says, I see, and then it has some words for you to fill out. So I want you to now look at your artwork and tell us what do you see? What do you see in your painting? So all of us in here would probably have lines and color. These are some things that would be in each of our it would be in each of our uh, Kandinsky paintings if this is something we did. However, if you did a drawing, you probably didn't paint this. So you'll have to tell us what you see in your artwork. Um, you might see shapes. You might see actual images of things, but that's for you to decide. I want you to write right here, what do you see when you're looking at your artwork? Also, feel free to pause the video if you need a few more seconds after writing what you have wrote. But I'm gonna move down to interpret. A term for it just means what you feel uh, or how you feel about your artwork. So the sentence that I wrote and you're gonna finish is, my artwork makes me feel. How does it make you feel? I want you to look at your artwork. Does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel sad? Does it make you feel angry or disgusted? Maybe it just makes you feel good. Maybe it makes you feel bad, but I want you to be honest with yourself. Whenever you look at your artwork, I wanna tell us how you are feeling. I'm gonna put good because that's an easy thing to write for our first one, but it might not be good for you. It might be bad. So I want you to write how it makes you feel. And you don't have to have a reason yet, but we're getting to that very last part, all right? So I would like you to write good, bad, or another emotion that you can think of again. Maybe it makes you feel angry. I've had one student that said it made him feel scared. His own drawing made him feel scared. And I was like, that's really interesting. So whatever the case may be, I want you to write how it makes you feel. You can write good, bad, or something else, okay? Finally, I want you to look at this last word, evaluate. Evaluate is just talking about what you did and what you liked or didn't like about your picture. So before you start writing on this one, I have these two boxes right here. One says I liked and one says I disliked. And what I want you to do is I want you to check mark or put an X in one of these boxes, depending on how you feel. This one right here is I liked. So if you liked your painting, you're gonna put a little X in there. However, if you don't like your drawing, you would put it in this one because this one says I disliked. And I want you to be honest with yourself. If you liked your painting, I want you to I want you to mark liked. If you didn't, then I want you to write disliked. I don't want you to lie about it. I want you to know what you did. But after you do that, you're gonna have to tell me why. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna do I liked again. And then the rest of the sentence says my work because, and I want you to be specific about why you like your work or why you don't like your work. If you can be specific with that, then it will help you understand what you have or what you have done and why you liked it. So I liked my work because it has lots of colors. Now, this might not be the reason why you like yours. You might like yours because you see a picture of a dog. You might like yours because you like the shapes that you picked. Some of you might not like your, might not like your um, picture. 
you might dislike it because you didn't paint as well, or you might dislike it because you used too much of one color. Whatever the case may be, I want you to tell me if you liked it, disliked it, and then why. And then that's gonna be it. After you have done this, you have completely finished your artist statement. You now can talk about your piece of work and how you feel about it. So if someone asked me about my Kandinsky painting, I would tell them, hey, I created a painting. Inside of it, I see lots of lines and color. And truthfully, my artwork makes me feel good. And I like my work because it has lots of colors. Do you see how these sentences helped us come up with an artist statement? It helped us figure out what we have made and why we have made it. So hopefully this was able to help you fill out your artist statement. Hopefully you got an understanding of what to write right here. After you have done that, you can place this with your artwork inside of your uh, portfolio. But that's it. Um, once uh, I'm gonna switch back over to my video right now for a clo to close this up. Um, and then we will wrap up this lesson on artist statements. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to finish up your artist statement. You're able to talk about your art and um, hopefully we were able to share uh, together. I would like to see your finished products and I would like to see your artist statements or at least what you said about your own art. It's always important for an artist to be able to talk about what they made. Um, we can always create art, but it's always nice to hear the story that, that came behind it, okay? So with that being said, um, have a great rest of the day. We'll close out with that. And then uh, the next time I see you guys, we'll be starting something new. We'll try a new project out. And, um, but until then, uh, be safe. And always remember, you're just one idea away from being in an art mood. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you later.